Hi there, my name is Jason Harlow. This is the second video for Physics 151 students on uncertainty analysis. Let's start with repeated measurements. When you make repeated measurements of the same thing, you often do not get the same number over and over. Instead, you get a distribution of numbers, which when considered together, give you an idea of the true number you are seeking. Suppose you make n measurements of a quantity x and you expect these measurements to be normally distributed, meaning following a Gaussian distribution. Each measurement or trial you label with a number i, where i is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. You can estimate the mean by adding up all the individual measurements and dividing by n. x bar, meaning the mean, is equal to 1 over n times the sum over all i. Uh, of x sub i. Suppose you make n measurements of the same quantity, once again, the best estimate of what's called the standard deviation is sigma is the square root of 1 over n minus 1 times the sum over all i of x sub i minus x bar squared. The quantity n minus 1 is called the number of degrees of freedom. And in this case, it is the number of measurements minus one because you used one number from a previous calculation, which was this mean x bar, in order to find this standard deviation. Here's an example on Excel of finding the mean of seven measurements of time in this case. So 5.334 seconds was the first measurement. You then measured it again, it got 5.462 seconds, etc. Seven measurements were made. You can calculate the mean on Excel with a function called average of all of these seven numbers. You can also automatically calculate the standard deviation by using that same equation from the previous slide by STDEV on Excel. So in this case, the mean of all these numbers is 5.427, and the standard deviation is 0.10014. So there is a roughly 68% chance that any measurement of a sample taken at random will be within one standard deviation of the mean. Usually the mean is what we wish to know, and each individual measurement almost certainly differs from the true value of the mean by some uncertainty. So there's a 68% chance that any single measurement lies within one Standard, standard deviation of this true value of the mean. Thus, it is reasonable to say that the uncertainty in X equals sigma. This uncertainty is often called the statistical uncertainty. There's also something called the weeding uncertainty. And there are two kinds of reading uncertainty, analog and digital. Let's start with analog. Imagine you use a ruler to measure the length of a pencil. You line up the tip of the eraser with zero, and here's an image below showing you what you see uh, at the other end of the pencil, which is up near eight centimeters. So, how long is the pencil? It's more than eight, but less than nine. It looks to be actually somewhere around maybe 8.25. But what is the reading uncertainty? So, there's no fixed rule that allows you to answer this question. You must use your intuition and your common sense. Could the pencil be as long as 8.3 centimeters? Again, it's not a real pencil, but I just don't think that it could be that long. Could it be 8.28? Well, maybe. And it could be as short as 8.23, but I don't think it's 8.2. So I think the real range here for this fuzzy tip of the pencil is somewhere like 8.23 to 8.28. So we estimate the reading uncertainty of this measurement to be half this range. So it's plus or minus 0.025 centimeters. And to be cautious, we might round it up and say 0.03 centimeters is the reading uncertainty. So we would say the length of the pencil is 8.25 plus or minus 
0.03 centimeters. Meaning that if we get a collection of objective observers together to all look at that pencil above and use a ruler, we would expect that most of them, so more than 68% of them, would report a value in this range, 8.25 uh, plus or minus 0 0.03. There's also a reading uncertainty for digital instruments. For example, um, with the digital thermometer shown, the last digit represents values of a tenth of a degree. So it says 12.8 degrees Celsius. The reading uncertainty is one half, of, plus or minus one half of the, the, that last tens column, in this case 0.1. So, half of 0.1 is 0 0.05. So the reading uncertainty for this digital instrument is 0 0.05 degrees Celsius. So you, in order to make it match, you would write this as 12.80 plus or minus 0 0.05 degrees Celsius. So we know about two kinds of uncertainty, statistical, which is where you find the standard deviation of a bunch of scattered measurements and the reading, which is coming from just looking at how you made the measurement. In most cases, when you have both a standard deviation and a reading uncertainty, one will be much larger than the other and you should choose the larger to be the uncertainty. For example, if every time you measure something, you always get the same numerical answer, like if you took that thermometer and put it in a sample and it was 12.8, and you turned around, did it again, got 12.8, you did it five times and always got 12.8, that indicates to you that the reading uncertainty is dominant. However, if every time you measure something you get different answers, which differ more than the reading uncertainty that you might estimate, then that means the standard deviation is dominant and should be your uncertainty. Let's talk about significant figures. Imagine you have a set of seven timing measurements for which the statistical uncertainty is clearly dominant, like that Excel uh, example we showed earlier. You use an equation to estimate that the standard deviation is 0.10014 seconds. Let's consider one of these measurements. Let's take the fifth one, for example, for which we measured 5.331 seconds. Using the standard deviation as the uncertainty, this measurement should be written as 5.331 plus or minus that standard deviation. And what this means is that there's about a 68% chance that the true value is somewhere between uh, you know, that mean minus the standard deviation and the mean plus the standard deviation. Hmm. So is that really what we should write? I believe that clearly just something about common sense tells me we're using too many significant figures here. It would be just as instructive to say that there's about a 68% chance that the true value is somewhere between 5.2 and 5.4 seconds. Or you could say the measurement is 5.3 plus or minus 0.1. In fact, it's not only more concise to report this, but it's really more honest. So there are two general rules for significant figures used in experimental sciences. Rule number one is that uncertainties should be specified to one or at most two significant figures. The second rule is that the most precise column in the number for the uncertainty should also be the most precise column in the number for the value. So if the uncertainty is specified to the hundredth column, then the quantity itself should also be specified to the hundredth column. Now let's talk about propagation of uncertainties. When you have two or more quantities with known uncertainties, you may sometimes want to combine them to compute a derived number. You can use the rules of uncertainty propagation to infer the uncertainty in the derived quantity. So I'm going to show you some equations. In these uh, equations, we're always going to assume that there's two directly measured quantities, x and y, and they have uncertainties. U sub x is the uncertainty in x, and u sub y is the uncertainty in y. And these measurements are totally independent of each other somehow. They don't 
depend on one another. There's something called the fractional uncertainty, which is the uncertainty of a number divided by the number itself, or divided by its value. So the fractional uncertainty of x is u sub x divided by x. And to use these rules for quantities which uh, cannot be negative, the fractional uncertainty should be much less than one. Rule number one is the sum or difference rule. So if some number z is x plus y or x minus y, then the uncertainty in z is the square root of the sum of the squares of the uncertainties of x and y. If, you have, if you're multiplying two numbers, so z is x times y, or if you're dividing, uh, z is x divided by y, then the fractional uncertainty in z is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the fractional uncertainties of x and y. Uh, rule 2.1, which can be derived from rule uh, two pretty easily, is that if you're multiplying by an exact constant, and uh, so z is x times y or x divided by y and x is an exact number, so the u sub x equals zero, then the uncertainty in this product is equal to the absolute value of x times the uncertainty in y. This is a useful rule for unit conversions, for example, where you know exactly how to convert from, from one unit to another. So there's no uncertainty in that, uh, that ratio. And then there's the exponent rule. So if z is x to the power n, then uh, the uncertainty, the fractional uncertainty in z is equal to n times the fractional uncertainty in x. Lastly, there's the uncertainty in the mean. So suppose, you, again, you have many individual independent measurements and they're repeated n times. Each individual measurement has the same uncertainty u sub x. So you can show that the uncertainty in the estimated mean turns out to be so this is the uncertainty in x bar is equal to the uncertainty in any individual measurement, all divided by the square root of n. So to do an example, let's go back to that Excel example of the seven different measurements of time. Um, so this standard deviation is the uncertainty in any one of these seven measurements. So if you were to report these seven measurements individually, you would report the first one would be 5.3 plus or minus 0.1. The second one would be 5.5 plus or minus 0.1, et cetera. The uncertainty in the mean is this 0.1 divided by the square root of seven, which is 0 0.038. So the mean is 5.427. Uh, the uh, uncertainty in the mean is 0 0.038. If we specify the uncertainty, to one significant digit, which is a good idea, it would be 0 0.04, and we should report the mean as t bar is equal to 5.43 plus or minus 0 0.04 seconds. <laughs>